Let me come over. Let me yeah, come closer. Come down. Well, because I want to get to hear him. So you were in the Navy, and you were on the aircraft carrier. The what's the name of it? He just said the it. Ranger. The Ranger. Yeah. Okay, and like, how long were you out at sea? Six months. Six months. Yeah. And did you only go one time? Yeah, just one. It was a shakedown crew, is what they call it. A what? Shakedown crew. <gasps> shakedown crew? Yeah. What yeah. does that mean? It's when you try to test the ship out, get everybody in their particular jobs, get ready for battle, you know, and all that jazz. But the war was over when I was on that. What year was that? That was 1947. What year did the war end? 45. 45. August. August the uh, 8th, when they bombed Hiroshima. Yes. And, well, actually, they got Nagasaki. Hiroshima was the 5th. Well, I can turn that light off. Nagasaki, gave, Nagasaki was the 2nd. There was seven no. days, about six days afterwards. Okay, say that one more time, Lonnie. Sorry. Nagasaki was the... Is, is the August the 6th. <laughs> yeah. Oh, August the 6th. August the 6th. Okay. 1945. 1945. Yeah. Okay. And this was World War II, right? Right. With uh, Hitler and all that. Oh, yeah. And where were you when Pearl, was, where were you when Pearl Harbor happened? I was in Western Oklahoma, <clears throat> Elk City. Oh, you were in Elk City. <clears throat> That's my hometown. You were too young to be... I was 14. Okay, but so but you remember it happening though. Well, I didn't know, I had no idea where Pearl Harbor was. Okay. And this guy that I was with, we were going through this old house adjacent to the school, and this kid came running up and saying, "Hey, did you hear about Pearl Harbor being bombed?" And this guy next to me said, "Oh my God, my brother is on the Oklahoma," and sure enough, he got killed. On Oklahoma. Is that a ship? In yeah. Well, it, yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, and that was in 1945. Okay. Um, no, that was, Pearl no, Harbor was 41, in... 41. 41, yeah. 41. And so, so you were 14. So, were you drafted? No, but I would have been had I not joined the Navy. Okay. Because they were taking everybody in the Army. And I didn't want to get in the Army, so I chose to go uh, to Navy. That was a good choice. Oh, yes. How many years did you have to sign up for? Well, uh, you, didn't, you didn't know at the time. Because oh. they either, you either joined up or, or you were drafted. Okay. There was no, like, you're joining up for two years, no, three you years. You three. didn't know until the war was over with. That's how long you were in there. Wow. Of course, then when the war was over with, they gave us a choice of either signing up for two years oh. or going to a school, to a printing school. So oh, that was my two, next question. Yeah, How did you... To any school. Okay. And you chose... I chose to go to printing school. And where was that school? Washington, D.C. No way. Anacostia, Maryland. Anna. Where the big naval base is there. Anna, Anna Anacostia? Anacostia. Oh, never heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so how long were you there? I was there for eight months. That's all? Yeah. That's cool. Was yeah. it more like a trade school type yeah. of situation? Yeah. Okay. What do you remember about, what was the name of your school? I had no idea. Okay. And what do you remember about being in school? Well, we just went to class every day, and they taught us how to tear down equipment, how to fix it. And, you know, because if they put this printing press on a ship, someone had to maintain it. And that's what we were trained to do, to tear it apart and, and put it back together. You know. So they had printing press on a ship? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I, for just paperwork? Well, morning uh, weather reports and stuff like that. You know. Oh, okay. Did so, you ever do the printing? You never went back out on a ship, though, after that? No, just okay. one, the one time. Uh, that was out of, we went out of Pensacola, Florida. On the... Ranger. Well, Ranger. Tell her about when you were on the plane. What? You used to fly the... Uh, they, well, you didn't fly, but you went, uh, took the reports. Oh, yeah. Tell me that story. That, that was one of my... After I got transferred to Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, we printed more weather maps for cabinets, cut of hay and a bunch of surrounding uh, airfields. And that's what we did each and every day, print the morning weather maps. And they would fly them out to these uh, different places. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, the plan down, didn't it? Yeah, what? Oh, uh, why were you on the I'm confused why I was on the plane. Oh, this instructor would come by and pick up and say, I want you to go with me today. Because they had to log what they called their flight skins, which was their money. Okay. And if, if you had so many hours in, you got so much money. Oh, okay. You know, in addition to your normal salary. Okay. You know, so. But I, we are coming in from uh, Rockport, Texas, and we was about 3,000 feet, and the engine cut out on us. We dropped about 500 feet in the glide pattern before the uh, engine caught on again. Of course, they had to clean up after me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you poop your pants? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I never flew again after that. Well, I, I, hate either. I hate flying, don't you do this? That's what they call broke me from sucking eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. No, I wouldn't. That's scary. Yeah, that's very scary. Yeah. Well, thank God you made it. And so, so then what happened after you got out of printing school? Uh, that, I went aboard the aircraft Ranger out of Pensacola. Like oh, that you went to printing school before? Right. right. Oh, okay, my bad. Okay. Yeah. So after after I got out of I got transferred to Corpus Christi, Texas. When you went on the Ranger and then you got came back right. on land and then you went to Corpus Christi. Right. Okay, right. go from there, my bad. Because and, and four guys that I went to school with were we were all transferred together. Say that one more time. The four guys that I was in the Navy with, or went to school with, we were all transferred at, at one uh, uh, one time. Okay, gotcha. So it was kind of a buddy-buddy deal, you know. And I was friends with those guys after, even after we got out of service. We'd be in contact with each other. Of course, they're probably all dead now. I was going to say, do you know where they are now? or No, it's been 25 years. Okay. Or more. It's so been, how long were you, <clears throat> so what did you do in Corpus Christi and how long were you there? I was there about uh, 15 months. Just still doing the printing stuff right, there? Right. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then did you get out of the Navy or how did you exit? Yeah. I, I did. They gave me an opportunity, the guys that weren't out early, they could get out early. So I chose to get out early. And of course, I went to, I put my application into Oklahoma City, and that's where I got my first job. Oh, in Oklahoma City? Yeah. Okay, where you guys met? Right. Okay, well, how long were you in Oklahoma City before you met Dolores? Uh, probably. Three or four months. Oh, not very long. Uh, well, the company, the company that hired me was called Printerlin, and they were a subsidiary of Simco Color Press in Oklahoma City. And the only reason that they established 
Pritolith was they were having union problems in Simcoe. So they wanted to get set up in a different business so that if they went on strike, they would have some place to print their, what we call, high school annuals. Yeah. And that's what we did, print annuals for different schools. Oh, that's cool. And that's, that's the reason that Printolith got started. started Is it Printolith, yeah. like, like like lithographer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Print hyphen, old hyphen, lith. Lith. Printolith. Okay. Did you ever work on a lino type? Lino? I never did. I knew vaguely how they operated, but I never ran one. What kind was out here? These were called Veritypers and IBM composers. Okay. Yeah. What's the oldest one that you had here? The earliest machine you had here called? Uh, well, the, the oldest one I ever had was what's called letterpress. Letterpress. Yeah, where they set move, movable type. You could either set it up by hand or put it on a line type, which was a line type you could set and type, and it came out in slugs, what they call slugs, and all these slugs would have type, had type on them. And then you could put them on a piece of paper and proof it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, and that's the reason. That's, that's how they did uh, newspapers. Yes, yeah. like in little sections. Right, right. Okay, so is Linotype the name of a, the brand name of a machine? Brand or it, name. It is. Brand name. But you didn't have that. You had the other, or did you? Well, I, we, we had, uh, they had another, another thing called Monotype, which you could set the type with big letters. Yeah, like you would slide them in right, like that? Right, yeah, I've, I've seen it right, on television. Right, yeah. And how would, would you have to crank the wheel? I mean, I don't know how old of a machine. No, they had a little motor on them that... that oh, it had motorized. Transport. It was kind of like a line type, except it did the type larger. Oh, it did it larger? Yeah, larger. Okay. The line type was real small stuff. So. Right, the font size. And, yeah, and, okay. the, and the other one was the big stuff, you know. They used it for headline stuff. Oh, for head, okay, just to get a and bigger the, font. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. There are, there are also other fonts that you could set it by hand if you, if it was a, you know, real big stuff. Like Did you have to have, like, uh, just drawers and drawers full oh, of those yeah. little blocks oh, of, yeah. oh my god, I can't even imagine. Oh, God. Yeah, and it was all set up. You had to read upside down. No way. <laughs> yeah, that's why I can take a newspaper and read just as good upside down. Can you really? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Who knew that? <laughs> well, you are doing a lot of things when you get old. <laughs> <laughs> I love history so much. It's fun. That's crazy. Okay, and so um, so I kind of know the rest of the story. You guys met at Marlowe's and... Um, Let's all get close together. No, it's fine. You fell off the road of hay going to Oklahoma City. Do you remember the first night you met her? This one over here? Your wife? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and y'all kind of went dancing or... Yeah. I'm just trying to get his perspective because you already told me. Why? Dolores said you'd throw rocks at her window. Is that true? Well, I never did hit her. Get <laughs> <laughs> over, Mom. She's no, fine. She yeah. Well, me and this guy, he had, he had been, I'd been going with this girl. What's her name? <laughs> Doesn't even remember. remember. What Betty. Was her name, Dolores? Oh, Betty. Dolores. Betty. No, I was going to look at her Oh, Pat. When I first met you. Huh? When I first met you. Marlowe's Drive In, Oklahoma City. Well, I don't know. I didn't know you were Your roommate, anybody. Mom. Wasn't it your roommate? Well, yeah, because, no. 
I didn't know you were dating anybody. Uh oh. You met Kat about the same time you met me. I'm a little confused. You've got me confused. Well, anyway, well let's skip the old that anyway, we don't need to Yeah. During the war, <laughs> I, I had a Lincoln Zephyr. You know what a Lincoln Zephyr is? Uh uh. It's a 1936 Lincoln Zephyr. A four, car? Four door. Is that a car? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, a Zephyr is something that flies in the air, I think. Isn't well, it initially? The, 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 but that was that what they called it. Right. The okay, Zephyr. gotcha. Anyway, it had been sitting on box it was during the war and everything. And they put it up for sale, and I saw the ad in the newspaper. So I went out and I bought it. I paid $600 for it. Wow, that's and it, cheap. And it was just like a new car because it only had, I think, 30,000 miles on it. What color was it? Ford. It was the color of Ford? You mean the color? <laughs> yes. It, no, it was black. It was black. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, and did you I, go pick her up in it? Well, uh, we drove up this, me and this buddy of mine, we drove up to Marlowe's Drive-In, and we said, now, you could order stuff delivered to your car or go inside. So we were just sitting there talking, and I seen Dolores, and I said, uh, that's the girl I'm going to marry, because I thought she was the most beautiful person I'd ever seen. Because even the drama queens out of high school, none of them looked that good, you know. She's stunning. So I consider myself pretty fortunate, you know. Was she? Did you wear roller skates at Marlowe's? No, you just walked. It's kind of like a Sonic, is what I'm saying. Yeah, she was. She never been served on the outside, did you? You always oh. served on the inside. What? You always served on the inside. Yeah, I didn't work driving. Yeah. No. Oh, you were just working on the inside. Yeah. So it was. It was. Fancier than a Sonic. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, was nice it like dining room? Did it have the car slots like a Sonic, like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, but it had a nice dining room as well on the inside. Right. Okay. Well, anyway, this lady that was banging the drive-in told Doris and her girlfriend that oh, the two. Oh, Jane. Are you talking about you dated her once in a while? Yeah. Jane. Yeah. The manager of the drive-in. Is the manager of the drive-in, Jane, the same girl you came to Oklahoma City with? No. What was that lady's name? Pat. That was Pat. So you and Pat came, and then did Pat work at the drive-in, too? No. Um, she worked elsewhere. We, were, we lived together for a while. Yeah, y'all were roommates. Yeah. Okay. So you and Jane worked at the at Marlowe's. Right. And uh, she was having an affair with the boss, Jane. Okay. okay. So uh, he said, uh, I'm going to get you an apartment, and I want Dolores to come and live with you. So. Oh, okay. So the. So they could spend more time together. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I went to live with her. Okay. Well, that's kind of lucky. You got a, an apartment. Yeah. Okay, so back to Paul. So you and your buddy go to Marlowe's. Dolores is working the most beautiful girl you've ever seen. You said, I'm going to marry her. Well, Jane asked Dolores, the, the two guys out in the car, you looking for a date or whatever. And she said, pick the ones you want to go with. And Doris picked me because she said, I look like a football player. Right, okay. So anyway, we were introduced and, and I guess we, I don't remember when we went on a date then or, or later on. Uh, yeah, next night or something. Okay, and Dolores said you would go that. to Snug Harbor and go dancing. That's where we tore up the dance floor. 
What kind of dancing were you doing? Oh, Western jazz, whatever, you know. Okay. Can you go into a little big more band, detail? Big band sound. Oh, big, like the kind where you push and you, and twirl. Jitterbug. Yeah. Like jitterbug? Yeah. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. Where did you learn to dance? I never was that good a dancer. Yours yes, better you dancer. were. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he wasn't a real dancer, but he, he did good. Yeah. You know. Good enough. I never, I never danced until I was probably 18 years old anyway. Right. Did anybody teach you? Did, like, a, another person teach you or another guy? Or did you ever, or did you just have to get out there and, like, try? Well, after I'd come back out of service, we'd go to these Saturday night dances and stuff like that, you know, and that's the way, the way I learned to dance better. Right. <coughs> what is a, I, for some reason, the word cotillion's coming in my head. Like a cotillion ball. Is that anything to do with the military? Maybe it's a different segment of the military. Oh, uh, I know what you mean, yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, <coughs> anyway. Where the, <coughs> where the service people come in and dance? Yeah, they'd bring in, yeah, yeah the, the service guys yeah. would come in and they'd have all the debutantes or whoever there, you know, in their fancy dresses. You know, I had an uh, excellent experience. Do you need something to drink, Juan? No, I'm fine. Okay. <clears throat> when I was transferred to Corpus Christi, they had to split up the, or the uh, unit. So they put me in this area where there was musicians. Yeah. And I, I stayed with these musicians for about three months. And I got to know some of these guys that played in the big bands and with Glenn Miller and all those guys, you know. So that was really an experience for me to know, get to know these guys. Wow. Not being a musician myself, oh, but I enjoyed the music. Tell her who you were in the Navy with. Oh. Oh, Spanky. Spanky's the, out of the... Uh, the Little Rascals? The Little Rascals. Oh my God, he, what? He and I went through the same company together. Wow. In San Diego. What was his real name? Do you remember? M uh, McFarland. Thank you, McFarland. <laughs> that was in. Really? Of course. Then he was older, so he, don't, he didn't look like anything like he did when he was a, When he was little on the show. Jack, yeah. You know. <gasps> That's yeah. Pretty so that cool. It's quite, quite an ordeal to get to know him, you know. What was it like on the boat for six months? Just curious. Just routine stuff. Yeah. Kind of wasn't exciting at all. It just. Did you ever get seasick? A little bit, but we never did hit any rough weather, you know. Were you under? Because I'm claustrophobic. Like, were you down in the boat most of the time, or would you go out to that fresh air? Or, well, I was, of course, being a printer. You were in. You in. couldn't print if the boat was up and down like that. It had to be pretty well stabilized in order to run the press and print. You know, so sometimes we would print everything on a sheet of paper, and then come in there and run the stuff minimum that we could get by with, you know. Yeah. But, but the, they distribute the uh, paper throughout the ship, you know. So we weren't uh, uh, we didn't have to do it every day. Oh, okay. We were there. Yeah. But it was the most leisure time I ever had in my life. Well, a lot of leisure time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you could go out to the Air? Did they have area where you could go? Oh yeah, you could smoke or do yeah. whatever you wanted to. Did you smoke? No. Okay, I didn't think so. I never did smoke. I smoked a little bit, but not very much. Floor smoked for a, a little bit, but you quit, right? Well, a long time ago. A long, long time ago, yeah. Quite a while. <laughs> yeah, I know. Years. Quite a few years. Okay, so, uh, sorry I skipped around on that. So, y'all met, you went on your day, you went dancing to the big band, 
And then, uh, I think I kind of know the rest of the story. You guys, uh, I mean, do you, I know this is personal. Do you remember your first kiss? Is that something y'all remember? I remember mine. We were playing spin the bottle. It was horrible. <laughs> you don't remember your first kiss? Okay, well then, never mind. Well, what else do you want to talk about, Robin? That's it. We know what? everything else. Okay. That was really interesting, Dad. I never realized thank, all that. Thank you, Aunt. Is there anything else, uh, any other stories you want to tell? One an, one quickie story. doesn't have to can be anything you want. Um, hang on. No, that pretty well wraps it up. Takes me back. <laughs> oh, let me ask one more question. So you have Cherokee, or is it Cherokee, Native American heritage? Yeah, my grandfather was half Cherokee. My dad was a quarter, and that made me an eighth. Okay. But I never was put on the rolls because when in the 40s, if you were an Indian, you were most of their dogs. It's horrible. Yeah. <coughs> so everybody kind of said, "No, I'm not. I'm not Cherokee or anything." Okay. So, but I'm probably either an eighth or sixteenth, and I, I don't know which. Okay. But and so you said your grand your grandfather was half half, half Cherokee. Okay, and I wonder if he. I don't know what year it was. My, the his wife. My grandmother was full blood Cherokee. Oh, she was full blood. Yeah. What, did what generation would it have been where they were on the Trail of Tears? Oh, it, that was years before their birth. Okay, that was probably in the seventh. Yeah, I don't even know what. That was in the eighteen hundreds. I bet that they. Right after World War, I mean, right after the. Uh, uh, not the Civil War. Civil War, yeah. The Civil War, yeah. right after that. Right. They moved them out of they, Louisiana yeah. and all those places, you know. Yeah, it's horrible. Sounds going bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my uh, I've been do I read a book yeah. recently about the Osage. Uh, it was about the FBI and about the Osage in Osage County, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and what happened up there. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of Cherokee here in by Tahlequah. Oh yeah, that's the that's their main area. It's Tahlequah. Tahlequah. Okay. Yeah, look, right. You ever notice the tel that meeting place in Tahlequah? This big building they have, and that was called their powwow church, where they all got together, made all the laws and everything, you know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, my battery's getting ready to die too. Okay, signing off for now. Bye. Thank you, Lonnie. <laughs>